Hello, welcome to another question and answer show here on Watch It Played. My name's Matthew and here, what we're gonna be doing is endeavoring to answer all of the internet's burning board game questions with a lot of your help. The first question I have this month, it's May. Wow. Is what is the next big trend in board games. If I knew that, I personally wouldn't tell you, and secondly would be back in the room somewhere dark, trying to work out a way I can make a bunch of money out of this. I don't know what the next big trend in board games is. I can feel that maybe trajectories, we can see kind of where things are going, where no one knows. No one knew Tamagotchis were gonna happen, right? Pogs, who could have seen that coming? Trends are, these natural forces of nature that no one sees happening until they're on us. I feel like the era of gaming that we're in at the moment is actually Michael Lee Murphy told me this. He said, he put it really well. He said, we're in the cozy games era of games. You know, so many games that are nature themed and beautiful and cozy and anthropomorphic animals, uh, trading berries and having little lanterns and being all cute. And I feel like cozy games is very much been a reaction to the world in general, right? Comfort from our hobby. The, a taste for dystopia has fallen by the wayside with the current events, right? So I feel like coziness, comfort, warmth, is something that a lot of people have been eager to get from the board game experience. And that's kind of led to this cozy era of puzzly games that make you go, God, I just need one more turn. I do recognize, of course, that the board game hobby itself is big enough to have more than one trend going on at the same time. Cozy games hasn't been the trend in war games. <laughs> it's not been the trend in Amerithrash games. It's been the trend in, you know, light to mid family weight type of puzzly games, right? Uh, but we see a lot of those in the hobby. So there's more than one thing going on at a time. But I do have some predictions for what the next era of games will be, or at least things that kind of could be happening in the next era of games. The first one is reprints. I think with the current climate, the financial climate of the world, one of the things that happens is we get more sequels and reprints of games because that is seen as a safer bet than a brand new game. A safer bet than a completely new series, a new world, a new thing, it's let's do a sequel. We see this in TV all the time. I feel that let's do a sequel to this game or reprint this game in a beautiful edition, that's a safer bet. So I think we'll see that along with something that I've realized instead of boxes getting smaller, I think each individual company, not every company, but many companies will make less games. I think that's a safer bet as well. That's the thing, it's not a safer bet because that one game you put your focus in tanks and you're done for. So it's, who knows, but I feel like companies making less games in general, each company, more companies, but less games per company might be something that we see. I feel like I've seen a bit more of a lean towards companies and publishers and designers making games that mix worlds a bit as well. And I can think of a few more games that might come out like that, where we have these Euro mechanisms with these Amerithrash mechanisms kind of melding together, these hybrid games. I think we'll get more of those. What do you think the next big trend in board games is gonna be? Privately DM me that information. Don't put it in the comments below. I mean, you can work out a deal, make some money. Oh, the other thing that I've seen a lot of recently, just as a side note, is trick-taking games. Is anyone gonna talk about how trick-taking games are having a full-on revival right now? Trick-taking games, that's the trend right now. The next question is, my partner loves casinos and I love board games. Are there any board games out there that he might enjoy with me? The short answer to that is yes. There are lots and lots of games about the kind of things that happen in casinos, gambling and betting and all those type of things. There's a lot of games straight up about casinos. <laughs> I've made a list of 10 games that I think someone might enjoy if they like casinos and want to get into board games because I love that as well. I love betting and gambling and risking it all and going big or going home, but I also don't like spending money in real life. I'd rather 
bid cubes and get some kind of enjoyment and then go home to a home that I still have that I can go home to. The caveat I'll do is I'm not going to add in any racing games like Downforce or Ready Set Bet, which are both betting bidding games. Both are fantastic games, but I don't find them to feel casino-y, if that makes sense. But I have also tried to add in a few weird games that hopefully you might not have heard of, because that's the kind of guy I am. The first game I've got is The Bank, which is kind of a betting game that's also set in a casino. It's very casino themed and you've got all these different casino tables and on your turn you're going to play cards into those casino tables and also move your player piece around the board so that you have access to those different tables and you want to win big at those tables but you don't know what's been bet into them. This is a fantastic game that I love. Uh, I played a game this, with this with the Watch It Played team and I tell you what, <laughs> I've never been so angry in my whole life. I got zero points in that game. Zero. So that's possible. And uh, Paula was like, I was trying to do things so that you'd be okay and I was like, yeah, but I didn't know you were trying to do that. So I get nothing. It's such a good uh, betting game and bluffing game where sometimes you're trying to put things in that double the amount of money in that casino and more money gets added to the different tables each turn and we all decide where that money goes. But we also can add in cards that completely neutralize that table. Oh, the bank is fantastic. Next is Las Vegas, which is a casino-based casino game. It's a dice game where you are trying to add dice into these different casino tables, again, to try and get the payouts there. This is an absolute classic game, and I absolutely love it. There's a Las Vegas Royale is the newest version Aaliyah did. It's a wonderful game. It's got a few extra bits and pieces in it as well. Las Vegas is a raucous good Filler weights, but big box experience. Stand up at the table, rolling your dice and trying to put these things in. I think it's a really good one. The next game is kind of left a field because it's Coloretto. Coloretto is a very quick card game where you are drawing cards into these different rows and you want to take the row of cards, but you can either add to a row or you can take a row. And it has actually a very strong reminiscent feeling of blackjack because you can either hit me and you turn another card over but you've also got to hope that nobody else tries to take that row of cards or you can cash out and hope nobody else does better than you that round so it's got a very much a uh, blackjack feel to it and it's a game that i've i've never had a game of coloretto go badly brilliant one for all you craps players out there, then I feel like there's no dice rolling game better than Strike. Look, I know that craps is not about anything that Strike is about, but you get the same tactical feeling, right? Tactile feeling, where you are throwing the dice and hoping that the odds are in your favor. That's a great one. And I think Strike has that feeling about it. Wits and Wages, on the other hand, is a game that has a bit of a feel of Baccarat about it. Because you're not betting on what you think, you're betting on what other people will think, which is kind of has the same feeling as Baccarat. In Wits and Wages, you are kind of like trying to bet out. It's a Vegas-style game again. You're trying to bet on what other people think, essentially. Who's going to think what? How many people are going to think this? So that's a great one, but it's obviously a Wits and Wagers style game, so it's more trivia. Vegas Showdown, which is one of my games that really needs to get reprinted, I'd love a reprint of this game, is a casino building game. So this has less of a casino feel play style, but it's all about building Vegas casinos. And you are kind of taking tiles in a bit of a Mad King Ludwig kind of way and building up a casino, trying to get things next to each other, trying to have tables and foyers and all this type of stuff next to each other so that you can build this casino out and get the most points. I think if you like the feel and the vibe of being in a casino, this is a great one. The next one is a game that's not out yet. So take this with a pinch of salt because it's a game called Circles from Hook Games and the designer of The Crew Mission Deep Sea, which is my favorite game of all time. What caught me about this game, and I've been interested in this for a while, it's a roulette game. It's, technically, it's two roulette games. There's two games included in the box, and the action selection of this game is a roulette table. You roll the ball and see where the action is. I don't know anything else about this. I don't know how much it's just random chance or how you can mitigate things. I didn't think there would be a roulette game. 
So I'm excited about this. I really, really am. The next one is another Blackjack style game, and that's Star Wars Empire vs. Rebellion. This was a very small box card game for two players where you are basically bidding on these different areas as there's different locations will come out and you what ha they have stipulations. This many cards can be played at this area and this many points the area is worth. And you're playing cards to that area trying to get as close to the number as you can without going over. If you don't want to go over too far because you don't want to overcommit to them or you know you get the, the you kind of you, you put too many resources there and you the Empire notices you or whatever, thematically. This game is very cheap on eBay because I bought a copy recently. <laughs> There's character cards that help you do extra fun, bonusy kind of game breaky things. This is a great little two player game that I'm surprised isn't more well loved. Sea Salt and Paper is a brand new game from Bombix actually, which kind of I think might fit this bill because it's got a bit of a poker feeling to it. There's lots and lots of games that involve making poker or rummy hands sets of cards. There's the Mystery Rummy series, there's, there's hundreds of games that do that, Battle Line. But the Sea Salt and Paper is a game where you are the betting part of it is there more so. Actually, it's kind of like a backgammon betting thing, essentially. But you've got this ability to say, just collecting sets, you take two cards, pick one, put one back down, or you can take the top card of one of the two decks, and you're trying to get these sets to score points in a combo we set collector kind of way. But the trick here is when you have seven points. You, that opens up a new option for you. You can either say, that's it, I'm calling it right now, game round over who's got most points, or you can bet for even more points or no points for yourself if you're wrong, where, or just a few points for a color bonus. But you can say, I think I've won even if you have another turn. So you say, last chance. And then if you win, you win big. There's a real big betting element to this one that makes it very exciting. And I love the artwork. It's a great game when it's available, please. So, yeah, see salt and paper. I think that's a good one. What are your favorite games that are either casino themed or give you the feeling of casino style games? What have I missed out? Which ones do you highly disagree with? Let me know in the comments. And the final question this month is, Traitor is a new show on TV in the UK. I think there's an American variant as well, which is basically Werewolf. Which games do you think would make the best TV shows? It is slightly funny to me that Traitor is this big TV show at the moment, or a few months ago now, and everyone was talking about Traitor, this, this amazing thing, and it's werewolf in it. It's werewolf, but with TV cameras and a few extra bells and whistles, right? It kind of reminds me of when you see articles printed, which is the Canadian football team can't stop playing Catan, you know, and everyone's like, what is this? And we in the hobby, I don't know, sometimes turn our nose up and go, well, we already knew about that. But I love it when these things happen. I think the general public seeing Werewolf, that's fantastic. How many people are going to see that TV show, find out it's based on Werewolf, buy a copy of Werewolf, then think this is fun, buy the resistance, then buy this and buy that, and all of a sudden they're playing Yinch. I didn't point at that, but it is the most fun game to say. The first thing I'll say is I think that there is space in the world for competitive board game play itself to be televised. Could every game do well in this? No, of course not. But like, you know, poker is a big TV show. I love watching poker. Of course, there's money involved. That's part of it. The reason we like sports and poker is because there's athleticism or skill, but there's also money involved, right? But I do think there are certain games that could be really well te televised. I mean, I watch a lot of Magic the Gathering content, people playing the game. What is it about board games that doesn't offer that? Obviously, we sh there's people streaming games all the time. I stream games. But I could see that a world where sh there is competitive board game play being televised. I'm leaning towards saying that the best thing for TV show is game show style TV shows, obviously. In fact, there's there a TV show in the UK which was essentially boiled down to a trivia game but ended up in the, the reveal of the game was the prisoner's dilemma, right? Where we can both steal and get nothing. We can both 
share and we both share, or one person can steal and one person shares, and the person who stole gets everything. The Prisoner's Dilemma. That was a TV show called Golden Balls, and it was hosted by a man called Jasper Carrot. Now, I'm aware that none of that sounds true, but it is true, and Jasper Carrot is a national treasure in my opinion. You know, I can also see something like Dead of Winter may, being a great HBO TV show. I mean, we have The Walking Dead, obviously. But Dead of Winter could be this short series, people trapped in a building, essentially, that type of thing. I could see that. You know, there's a lot of games where thematically I could see a movie or a TV show being made about them. But I think I would actually watch a TV show that was like a quiz show, a trivia kind of, like a competitive show where each round of the show was a different game. One round they're playing Don't Mess With Cthulhu, the next round is a giant version of Tumbling Dice, or the next version is Crokinole, then the next round is Green Team Wins, those type of things. I could see a TV show that was owned by Hasbro or Asmodee or something, where each round is a, is a different game. What do you think? What board games would make good TV? Let me know your opinions down below. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If any of the questions got your creative juices flowing and you've got better answers than I, put those down below. And until next time, everyone, thanks for watching.